This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Worst Storm in Quarter of a Century. Absolute monster. They were expecting phenomenal waves, possibly reaching 45 feet in height. That's crazy. A conveyor belt of storms. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to do my best to educate and inform you. A wet and wild winter is here. Water is dangerous. Water can do maximum damage. The United Kingdom is flooding. This map looks almost like the whole island could go under. This is pretty much Great Britain. One position I do believe I have held consistent upon in the duration of Thor News. And no matter what, over time, the oceans will rise. Flooding at Ethentley and between Taunton and Bridgewater and Somerset means that all mainline routes to the region from London are closed. I mean, that is just a scary picture. The winds have whipped up waves of up to 35 feet in Cornwall and along other exposed coastal areas, prompting warnings that onlookers could be swept off their feet. Atlantic Storm Ruth is brewing with 150 mile per hour winds and 75 foot waves. Defense is breached. The Environment Agency has three severe flood warnings, which mean danger to life in place. Two in Somerset, and one for Chiswell in the Isle of Portland. The agency has also issued more than 180 flood warnings and almost 300 flood alerts. UK storms, coastal areas and west hit by renewed gales. UK weather, no respite from storms set to continue into next week. The Met Office has issued severe weather warnings, meaning be prepared for rain and wind across southern England and Wales until Sunday. Ah, Thor of Thor News, have issued severe weather warnings across the globe and that be prepared for anything even beyond weather across the globe. These are strange times. And maybe I wasn't wrong about Kama Ison. Maybe it was the harbinger of the century. And you know what? It's hard to get people into understanding the weather, atmosphere, nature, environment, planetary science, and the magic of the universe. So you gotta come up with simple, slick titles like UK Storms. Why so wet and windy? You gotta throw wild in there, but I guess I say that because I'm American. If you think it's been unusually wet and windy, you're right. And if you've had enough of it, you're not alone. I don't know what that means, like, things are weird all over. How bad is this weather? Parts of England have had their wettest January in more than 100 years. And it's been blowy. The Met Office says December was arguably the stormiest month since January 1993. The environmental agency has two severe flood warnings in place, meaning danger to life. A third is in place in Chiswell, Dorset, where people were warned that rough seas could breach defenses and launch shingle over the promenade. Water pretty much destroys everything that was not made to be in water. And forecasters have warned that there is more extreme weather to come next week as Storm Ruth batters Britain with gales, torrential rain, huge waves, and yet more flooding. Gusts of up to 80 miles per hour across southern England and Wales are causing power cuts, travel disruption, and damage to property, combined with a deluge of up to 40 millimeters of rain in places. The West Country is now completely cut off by rail, following a landslide on the line at Crewkerne in Somerset. The Conservative Minister Prime for Bridgewater and West Somerset said that the river levels in his constituency are still enormously high while being heavily critical of the environment agency for not dredging the area we have been let down by london on the ground the environment agency are working hard up in london i don't know what they're doing which is basically saying like people use it pr pretty decent and it's the bureaucracies that run it all and there's the politicians at the top and the regulators that don't do the finest of jobs when they are needed the most dredging is often not the best long-term or economic solution well, it's Thor News opinion, but I'm not sure that in the middle of a global central bank liquidity flood and a global mother nature flood that looks like it could sink the United Kingdom, Great Britain, I don't think worrying about the best economic solution is your primary concern, environment. It's heartbreaking to think that people in charge to protect everybody and have them deal with the changing climate always have the best economic solution in mind. David Cameron overruled him and ordered the Environment Agency to step away from its opposition to expensive practice. Forecasters from the surf website MagicSeaweed.com 
have dubbed the storm an absolute monster. There are fears of structural damage from the high winds, which the Met Office has said it will be as strong as 80 miles per hour, but some forecasters have said could reach 150 miles per hour at times, and flooding from the strong and powerful waves. The very strong winds are expected to last into Sunday morning. People were urged to stay away from coastal areas. Snow could also fall over some parts of Wales and Scotland. So whether it be 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years, 100 years, coastal cities are bound to go the way of Atlantis. So we got to get prepared for that. And I have my doubts about the plans we have in place now. Sometimes I think our education systems are about making sure everyone is a good employee instead of getting everyone prepared for the future. A week ago, the Prime Minister received a letter from local farmers last September in which they asked for government funds to help with flood protection and dredging. I would guess maybe farmers <coughs> who have green thumbs and a good relationship with Mother Nature and can sense the subtle changes in the atmosphere and the environment and the animals had a feeling like I've had, though I do not have green thumbs, that man, the upcoming storms could be bad for a while. So can I, we get some help? I guess is what they said. And the guy who is no longer Prime Minister decided no. Jacob Cope, a forecaster at, at the BBC Weather Center, says the winter storms have been no more intense than others of recent years. But we have had several big ones in quick succession. And that looks set to continue with another deep depression on Saturday. Well, I'll say this. I don't remember seeing cities like New Orleans totally flooded out. New York totally flooded out, I'm seeing Italy flooded out, United Kingdom flooded out, Ireland flooded out, Colorado flooded out, major cities in Canada that I cannot remember at this exact moment flooded out. Before like 2001, you never saw that shit, ever. I mean, maybe once, but not like four times a year. That's new, party people. Yes, the climate is changing because change is constant throughout the universe. Be prepared. Communities and local government secretary Eric Pickles chaired a Cobra meeting on Saturday evening. You serious, man? I'm trying to be serious. Like, I, guys, I've been doing my best. Stay serious. These are very serious issues. How can I? Read that sentence again. Communities and local government secretary Eric Pickles chaired a Cobra meeting on Saturday evening. Cobra from G.I. Joe is led by a pickle? Why, well, I'm not surprised. He additionally said an additional, he said, an additional 1,600 Cobra personnel are now standing by across the south and can be deployed rapidly if required. And then he didn't end his quotes, but he started talking again. Yeah, and G.I. Joe, the comic book and movies, I guess, Cobra, they're not good guys. They're like Hydra. They're not necessarily good guys. They're more like mercenaries. I'm not saying that the fine military of Mr. Pickles' leadership is, you know, I'm just saying that. Just <laughs> have a bunch of Cobra soldiers to an American. That's just, you know. Okay, what? Flood Ambassadors. See, that's like a goofy name, too, man. Flood Ambassadors. Oh, guys, don't worry. I know your home is destroyed. Your entire family is displaced. You don't know what the hell's gonna happen. Your town is gone. Don't worry. The Flood Ambassadors are here. America, we got ambassadors to countries, I guess. Over there, they got ambassadors to natural disasters. <laughs> they have, like, tornado ambassadors. And, I mean, you know, like, I just, this isn't funny. I just, man, Saturday night. Been offering practical advice for a year. Get the hell away from coastal cities. Shit's gonna get bad. I don't know why. Well, the data. Who's this guy put it? Unless we start to care about the planet and each other, we are doomed one way or another. Amen, and I agree. And he goes on to say, On the other hand, you lot are chicken nuts in a bag. I care. I just don't think the global plan is any good. I too care. And at this moment, I don't think the global plan is any good either. Okay, if NASA is right that comets are dirty snowballs, maybe Comet Ison was the harbinger of change. That it's going to snow, and the snow's going to melt. So it's going to get wet and wild everywhere and the oceans are going to rise so you need a short medium and long-term plan to get out of coastal cities everywhere i would imagine if i was in charge of protecting everybody that is a recommendation i would make i'm almost sure the oceans will rise whether it be one year 
10 years, 100 years, they ain't going down. So that's life in 2014. Run, fight, or surf. Either way, be prepared. God bless everybody. If we just all come up with the right plan on how to do everything, I think we could uh, adapt and adjust to everything pretty fast, if we, especially if we worked as a team. I guess only if we worked as a team, really. I've never seen before heard the term chicken nuts in a bag. Did a Google search and found nothing. Could someone explain what that term seen in above comments means? Deep low of 951 millibars of pressure. Under pressure. A huge wave slash south coast of storm hits. A conveyor belt of storms. Absolute monster. Water is dangerous. Water can do maximum damage. Not only in its ability to exert force, but in its ability to seep and soak, warp, damage and destroy. Seriously, Great Britain, brace yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here with an emergency Second Amendment alert. If you get this information out to everyone you know, and if we force the pro-gun press to cover this, this can be a major blow against the victim disarmament crowd, who all have their own bodyguards and armored compounds like Mayor Bloomberg and, of course, Michael Moore. This is the political elite that seek to disarm their quarry. Ladies and gentlemen, a major mayor in New York State who was in on the Mayors Against Gun Violence meetings run by Handgun Control Incorporated, the Brady Center, and others, with Mayor Bloomberg, came out and said he left the group because the plan is not, quote, sensible gun control, but registration and then confiscation. Now, I know that most of you out there already know that's their plan. They've done it all over the world. They've done it in New York City, Chicago, anywhere they're in control. But ladies and gentlemen, this is a major blow against them right now because it shows their treachery. Now, remember, the mayor pro tem in Austin, Mike Martinez, last year made national news at a gun rally that we caught on tape. When people had signs saying no gun ban, he said, hey, after we register, we will confiscate. He's part of Bloomberg's national deal right here in Austin, Texas. So just like I told you the Copenhagen documents on global warming being fake and a power grab, just like I told you five years ago, that was huge. And we pushed it out there, you pushed it out there, and it literally was like a Death Star being blown up event for the globalist empire, the corporatist, the monopoly men. This can be as big because it shows their plan, as Feinstein said, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in when they say, we're for your guns, just let us register them. Don't have private sales, just let us have a record. We don't, we'll never take them, we'll never take them. Again, this shows the general public they fooled how it's disingenuous. Here is the article right here, ladies and gentlemen. It is so incredibly, so incredibly important. Uh, mayor, nationwide gun confiscation is goal of mayors against illegal guns. The New York mayor says that he left the group over confiscation plans run by this literal seditious subverter. There's the uh, mayor pro tem saying they're going to confiscate the guns after they register in Austin that we caught on tape. This story at InfoWords.com needs to go mega viral, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Right. I myself don't own any guns, but I like having the right to be able to if I want to. I mean, that's in Florida, it's a necessity because that's the only way if an alligator attacks you, that's the only thing you can do is use a gun. You can't use a stick, <laughs> a sword. You can't use anything else. You got to be able to have that right. You know, there's some things you, you have to have a gun for self-protection when need be. Plus, the, the people who... who the, the people who are, like the criminals, they're not going to register their guns. They're just taking it away from the people that, that will register them, which is normally the, the people who aren't criminals. What's really going on? I'll do it. I'll make it viral. I'll put it on my channel. Uh, those watching, if they want to copy it from my channel, that's fine too. Alrighty then. February the 9th, 2014. This is part two of the uh, transhumanism series, guys. 
We were talking about azo dicarbonamide that was in the Subway bread. It's, it's in a lot of other things that I'm going to show you. But this is kind of the chemical breakdown. It's a list as danger. Avoid breathing dust, fume, gas, mist, vapor, spray. If experiencing respiratory symptoms, get to a hospital. Do not breathe the dust. Avoid contact with skin. Wear suitable gloves. Listen to this, guys. They're putting it in our food. All the company, countries in the world, um, except Canada and the U.S., have banned it even coming in contact through containers. Check, just pause these and read it if I go too fast. Wash off with soap and plenty of water. Take victim immediately to the hospital if it comes in contact with your skin in our food. Never give anything by mouth to any unconscious person. It just doesn't get any better than this. This sounds like one grade below radiation. It's so dangerous, guys. Some type of gas. It says sweep up and shovel, contain spillage, and then collect with electrically protected vacuum cleaner. It wear respiratory protection. Again, I want you to pause this and read through it. It would take forever for me to do this because I want to show you the list of the people that are doing this. Appearance yellow powder remember just like in the selenium odor <clears throat> no data available melting point check this out 220 to 225 degrees centigrade flash point 225 degrees centigrade this guys last year i did a video about the 1200 year conspiracy about the culling this is more than just culling some people will be able to take this <clears throat> transhumanism. Others, it will kill them. You may be given that choice. They talk about the moral f uh, factors here to where, even uh, on the economic level, to where some people can afford to um, <coughs> what they're calling enhance their bodies if they have the money. You take that mark, guys. This is a, this is unbelievable to me. Basically, they're putting poison crap chemicals in this bread. He also is showing some other ones on here. That's BP Earth Watch. Um, best thing to do. It seems like it's the fast food places. Don't eat, don't eat the bread. That's what it seems like. Just stay away from the bread until you know for sure these chemicals are not in it. How's that one? It's just very simple. Fast food places don't eat the bread. In fact, Maybe you shouldn't patronize any 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 of these companies that are making bread that has this chemical in it. Alrighty then. Oh, what we wow! It's just if you not, I don't think bread's that good for you anyway. Really, get the real grain. Get the real nuts get the, the 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 real stuff and if you got to smash it down and make it yourself fine wow boy that sure looks unappetizing let me see if i can back it up a little bit we can look at some of the other companies it looks like there's like thousands of them look below okay hold on we'll go back here's some more maybe if you can, you can always uh, make it bigger. Aunt Miller's. Burger King Whopper. Wow. Country Health Split Butter Wheat Bread. Country Health Kids, Choice Whole Grain, 
white bread. Wow. Busted. All right, don't patronize it. Don't eat bread. Unless you really know know what's in it or you did it yourself, I would just wouldn't patronize any of these like major uh for them to do that. I wouldn't patronize them. I'll never go to Subway anymore. Because if it's not in one thing, they'll probably switch it and put it in something else. There it is. It says a zodicarbonamide. Here, here's the word here. You might want to full screen everything so that you can see it. Now, that's it. That's that industry is going to go under now. Guess you gotta stop going to fast food places and also buying anything that has bread in it. Very interesting. Wow. Alrighty, then that's just my opinion. That's what I say. So what? They take it out. Should have never been in there in the first place. What it is is a dumping ground. For industrial waste. There's industrial waste. And since the companies that make this crap. Doesn't want to pay to get rid of it. They figure they'll just mix it in to the food. And sell it to you. So they don't have to pay. To dispose of stuff. They do that sometimes with cigarettes too. That's why a bunch of crap ends up in there. You're paying... Instead of them being charged and them paying to get rid of toxic waste, they said, let's just put it in, in different things and then we could sell it and make money off of it and let them burn it or eat it. You know, dispose of it that way. It's just terrible. Terrible. Alrighty then. Alright, moving on. Take care. Moving on. Live, this is one for the record. I'm Diana, and today is February... 9th, 2014. Here are your news updates for today. Alright, I'm attaching a lot of news for a Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. So stay tuned after this report. Any &E news, energy news. U.S., Canada. Today, French government map shows maximum radiation directly over Hawaii on March 21st, 2011. Highest levels of anywhere in world, including Fukushima. I believe also uh, Florida had the highest cesium also in the world back in March of 2011. You might want to Google that. That was reported by e, &E News. But again, I'll say it again, heads up, French government map shows maximum radiation directly over Hawaii on March 21st, 2011. Highest levels of anywhere in the in world, including Fukushima. All right, moving on. E, e News, Energy News, Japan, Fukushima. TV, Fukushima Underground Dam not working. Radiation levels now exceeding government le limit near shore. TEPCO, official. The flow of contaminated water into ocean is causing problems. It's quite difficult to stop. Also today, 
government experts, it was Reactor 2 explosion that released plutonium from Fukushima plant, highest levels found over 20 kilometers away. ABC Radio, professor on TV said 32 grams of plutonium could be ingested with food without danger of death. ABC Radio professor on TV said 32 grams of plutonium could be ingested with food without danger of death. I guess we'll have to hold them to that, and that way if someone does die, and that is incorrect information, I guess now uh, the ABC Radio station that had that professor on TV that, that stated that, now they're liable. What do you think? Also, let it be known that I was watching um, a program that said, uh, not sure which one it was at this very moment, but someone might want to Google it. I believe they said that uh, General Electric was buying NBC. Wonder why they're doing that. Gosh. Why, why would General Electric be buying, buying uh, media out there, mainstream media? I wonder why. All right. Prove me wrong. All right. Also today, Japan nuclear experts. Footage shows major problem at Fukushima Unit 1. Cesium released to continue for next five decades. Oh, let's say that again. Japan nuclear experts footage shows major problem at Fukushima Unit 1. Cesium released to continue for next five decades. That's 50 years. TEPCO, even if we knew where it's broken, how can we stop it? Still in the dark about other two units. Wow. Sounds like... Again, someone's incompetent. Why did you build it? Why do you use it if you cannot control it? Hmm. Alrighty then. Well, it's Sunday evening, and let's get ready for Monday, and the count will start all over again. Stay tuned. I have a lot of news for you. Alrighty then. Take care. Be safe. And... Be prepared for anything. All right, take care. I'll see you tomorrow on the flip side. Japan's Ministry of Health will conduct an in-depth study of workers at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Questions remain how they were affected by radiation from the 2011 nuclear accident. Some 30,000 workers so far have been assigned to decommission the damaged reactors. The ministry has already conducted medical checks of about 19,000 workers who entered the plant just after the accident. The results were recorded in a database, but the database does not include radiation exposure levels before the accident or details of lifestyle habits, such as smoking. If workers develop cancer or cataracts, it would be difficult to determine the impact from radiation. The ministry will set up a panel of radiologists and other experts to determine the study contents. A report will be presented around May. Ministry officials say they hope to start a study based on the report next year.
Politicians in Japan are trying to find common ground on a plan to temporarily store highly radioactive debris from the cleanup of the 2011 nuclear accident. Central government leaders want to build three facilities in Fukushima to store the waste, but the governor of the prefecture is pushing for two. Yuhei Sato spoke to, on Wednesday about the central government storage plan, which came out in December. The proposal calls for intermediate storage facilities to be built in the towns of Okuma, Futaba, and Naraha. The government would buy 19 square kilometers of land in the municipalities. However, Governor Sato says he'll suggest dropping Naraha from the plan. It's best if the storage space is kept as small as possible in order to make progress in rebuilding areas around Fukushima Daiichi. Sato says officials from Okuma and Futaba have told him that all the municipalities around the plant should discuss the disposal issues separately from whether they will accept the storage facilities. The governor says he wants to hear from them soon. Officials in Naraha have already rejected accepting the radioactive debris, which includes leaves, branches, and other vegetation collected during the decontamination work. They say they're preparing to allow former residents return once radiation levels are deemed safe. Governor Sato says he'll ask central government leaders to discuss an alternative storage plan after making arrangements with mayors of municipalities around the plant. Asian tourists are getting a chance to enjoy Japanese cultural activities at the Hakone Hot Spring Resort area near Tokyo for the Lunar New Year holiday. <laughs> Japanese traditional female entertainers called Geiko welcomed tourists from China, Thailand and other countries with dances and song. The foreign sightseers experienced traditional Japanese calligraphy and took photos with a man dressed in a samurai costume. I enjoyed the beautiful town and landscape. I'm grateful for the chance to view Japan's traditional culture. I think this is a good experience. An official in charge of the event says he wants tourists from East Asia to enjoy Japan's attractiveness. People in a port in northern Japan have prayed for a good catch of cod and safe fishing. Tuesday is the beginning of spring on the old Japanese calendar, and fishermen in the city of Nikaho in Akita Prefecture mark the day by holding a special festival. The community first held the event some 300 years ago. Fishermen prepared about 40 cod each, weighing more than 10 kilograms to display at the festival. Fishermen and children paraded from the port to a shrine two kilometers away with the cod hoisted on bamboo poles. They hung the cod in the shrine grounds and prayed for a good catch this year. I'm happy that we could prepare cod to offer at the shrine. Local fishermen have been able to go fishing only half the usual number of days so far this season because of rough seas.
Researchers at the World Health Organization warn the number of cancer patients around the globe could rise sharply, especially in developing countries. WHO researchers say the number of new cancer cases could rise more than 50 percent to 22 million a year in the next two decades. They published the report ahead of World Cancer Day on Tuesday. They say more people in developing countries will likely get cancer as their lifestyle changes. WHO researchers note that more than 60 percent of new cases of cancer are in Africa, Asia and Latin America. They want governments in those regions to do more to prevent the disease and to detect it early. Researchers say one way of doing that is to make it easier for people to get health checks. They also say raising tobacco prices and regulating sales of sugary soft drinks and alcohol would help cut the risk. <laughs> have one of the fastest growing economies in the world. They've seen double digit growth for the past three years. Foreign investors have seen an opportunity. More and more companies from Japan are operating in the country. And one is trying to get people to develop a taste for a Japanese staple. NHK World's Tomoki Matsuda has the story. Kimihiro Ito is a rice wholesaler in Niigata, north of Tokyo. He has come to run battle to research how people here might enjoy Japanese rice. Conveyor belt sushi may be pricey because all the ingredients have to be imported. Even so, it's catching on fast among newly affluent Mongolians. I love sushi. Recently, I've been eating Japanese food a lot. It's really popular. Demand is high, so there's plenty of opportunity here. Even so, it all still has challenges ahead. Rice doesn't grow in Mongolia, so it's all imported. The South Korean and Chinese version is available, but it's less than half the price of Ito's premium quality product. And although rice has become very popular, Mongolians usually mix in salt and oil to season it. Prepared like that, all rice tends to taste the same. Ito realized the way to get Mongolian people to buy his more expensive premium rice was to show them how delicious it tastes plain, the way it's eaten in Japan. So he brought over a Mongolian trainee, Zonjal Gao, to Niigata for three months to understand the way rice is eaten in Japan. This is a trainee from Mongolia who is working with us. Zonjal Gao wrote detailed instructions in Mongolian for eating and cooking the rice to be printed on the bags. In December, Ito celebrated a new joint venture with local investors. He opened the first rice polishing plant ever built in Mongolia. Instead of shipping white rice from Japan, he's polishing it on site. That way, it will really taste good. He gives out samples to potential customers. This is premium rice from Niigata. This rice, well, I have to say it's very good quality. I look forward to working with you. Ito is also keen for local supermarket shoppers to taste the rice. He hands out rice balls made from the fresh milled grain. Zorjalga also explains the Japanese style of cooking rice. This is how it tastes when it's freshly milled. It's delicious. I've never eaten fleshly meal rice before. It tastes great. If Japanese rice farmers and distributors continue with these efforts to improve the quality of rice and publicize it more, they should be well received in the Mongolian market.
By next year, Ito aims to export 500 tons of his premium Niigata rice, up from 300 tons this year. The U.S. Navy is investigating allegations of cheating on exams at a training facility for nuclear-powered submarine operators. The chief of naval operations revealed at a news conference that officers at the facility in South Carolina may have cheated on a regular written exam designed to maintain their proficiency. U.S. media reports say around 30 people have been involved. To say that I'm disappointed would be an understatement uh, whenever I hear about integrity issues. Uh, it's disruptive to our unit's success. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel gave a direct order to the Navy to look into the scandal, which is the second to hit the country's military this year. Last month, the U.S. Air Force found that more than 90 officers had cheated on a proficiency exam for the operation of intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads.